in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. There's a long-standing tradition in the Church as to the discussion of what we call wounds. In fact, we have in the Old Mass a particular line which we say at every Mass, Senabitur anima mea, that my soul may be healed. So, and the last preparatory prayer of the priest before communion is one of the healing of the soul. What's it mean to be healed? We need to separate the authentic tradition about healing out from the, just the sappy, sentimental um, thing that you see today where people are just looking to have their emotions fed. That's not what we're talking about here. The word wound ultimately refers to physical damage to our bodies in some way, usually caused by something or someone inflicting harm on them. A wound is something which is inflicted by oneself or another, so there's some agency that causes the wound. A wound causes some harm to something good, and there is something good which undergoes some type of damaging action. When a wound occurs psychologically or spiritually, there is some evil caused or associated with the good. For example, the person may view himself as good, but someone embarrasses him publicly, and so the evil of embarrassment is associated with that other individual. A wound is, no, is something which normally causes pain, and a wound requires a healing process, so it takes time in order for that to occur. Only that which is physically capable of healing can heal. And likewise, in the psychological realm, or in the spiritual realm, only those with the proper psychological tools and resilience can heal. In the spiritual realm, only those with the right spiritual tools can heal. The healing process regarding the wound can be accelerated by medicine. So that's what we know about wounds. And when we analyze the notion of a wound, there are several components that occur psychologically. The first is that when a person is wounded, the perception of the injury remains. Also, since a wound is something which causes pain, the will and our emotions will be habituated in sorrow at the thought of the injury, and so the person with the wound will experience sorrow in the will, or the emotion of sorrow. A spiritual wound is one which arises from our sin, or in which we allow the sin of another to hurt us. It is possible, after some healing of the wound, still to have the emotional wound while not having the volitional wound. Much like the distinction between emotional and real guilt, a wound can heal intellectually, that is, someone can actually forgive the individual, while that part of us, that is, we can still associate with the person, or event, or thing, the pain, or the sorrow, or the injury. So even though intellectually we've made that, and volitionally we've forgiven the person, Nevertheless, a, the person can still suffer from the emotional wound. A physical wound often debilitates the whole person. For example, a person shot in the leg during wartime often cannot function as a soldier fully, if at all. In like manner, a psychological wound tends to debilitate the person psychologically. That is, it weakens them psychologically. This comes from the fact that sorrow or any strong passion tends to captivate the soul. That is, it tends to lock the mind into the consideration of the pain or the sorrow or the thing that's happened to them. We say time heals all wounds. This is true, not only physically, but psychologically, but not spiritually. Time heals the wounds because over time the person recalls the image less often which causes the wound and the memory to fade. Also, as time tends to put a psychological distance between the person and the wound, wounding event, the evil seems less imminent and present, and therefore there will be less pain or sorrow. Just as the physical healing process often is accompanied by pain, so the healing process psychologically causes pain. In other words, it's very painful to heal psychologically. Often those who suffer from some psychological or spiritual wound will lack emotional stability because the wound, the sorrow of the wound will cause many other emotions. Sorrow causes anger, and since the wound is something which persists, sorrow causes anger, 
And since the wound is something which persists, the person suffering from a wound will find it difficult not to hold on to the anger arising from the sorrow. This will cause the person to develop those habits associated with anger. The sorrow itself, since it persists, will incline the person to mull over the memories that are associated with the anger. Those with depression and wounds often cannot get the images out of their imagination. Those suffering from wounds must also be careful not to give in to the subtle form of delight or pleasure that arises when we experience passions according to our disposition. Over time, a wound will dispose the person to the passion of sorrow from which this pleasure can arise. Those who suffer wounds are prone to the passion of despair, since the sorrow will seem unmitigated. They will also be prone to the passion of hatred, since the sorrow will constantly remind them of the evil that they have suffered, which will move them to hate the thing which caused the injury. Those who suffer wounds sometimes find themselves being inclined away from something that requires social interaction. Since sorrow causes flight, those who are wounded will often seek refuge in isolation and quiet. As the wound festers, which just means as it begins to habituate the various faculties within our souls, the person will find that social interaction will cause pain, not just with the person causing the wound, but with all people. Since we are inclined as human beings towards social interaction by nature, we receive a certain pleasure from fulfilling that inclination. As a result, this pleasure acts contrary to the pleasure received by the, pa by the passion of sorrow in relationship to the person's disposition of that passion or emotion. Since the emotion of delight moves when contrary to sorrow, it will cause the wounded person suffering or pain, since he will be robbed of the pleasure of the passion of sorrow. This is often why those who sorrow find it painful to try to be cheerful or think of something joyful. Since human nature is weak because of original sin, human beings have a hard time finding their passions, emotions, and dispositions. Sorrow can also cause the passion of fear since a person can fear future suffering from the wound itself, as well as fear of being wounded again. Those who have been wounded will often find themselves subject to many phobias. That's another name for just a bunch of habits of fear. All of, those indicate, all of this indicates that the person with the wound can suffer many psychological ills and will often undergo swings of uh, mood swings. While not all swings in the passions are a sign of a wound, since they can be caused merely by chemical imbalances or physiological defects, nevertheless constant mood swings in someone who does not have the disposition or characteristics of mood swings could be exhibiting the suffering of some wound. Wounds have a great capacity to affect our judgment, which in turn can affect our spiritual life by drawing our attention to the wound rather than God. In other words, sometimes in being wounded, we can become narcissistic or self-absorbed. Those who have suffered wounds may often become abusive of others, and this is for two reasons. The first is, is that since wounds can cause anger when a person abuses others, either verbally, emotionally, or even physically, he gets the delight arising from the vindication of the anger. In this respect, a person can become abusive as a means to mitigate his sorrow. But this is psychologically misdirected, since the vindication often moves a person to recognize that he is inflicting pain on others. This can cause him additional sorrow later, added to the sorrow of the original wound. This can exacerbate the wound, moving him to seek mitigation as well as causing further wounds in himself. Misery loves company. The psychological wound will often drive people to make the lives of others difficult. This is is in practice in some psychological circles in which the person who has been wounded is allowed to take out his frustration or anger on the person who caused the wound. While some find mitigation for the sorrow, it does not heal the wound but tends to make it worse. Why? Because the person gives in to the emotion that undergirds or is associated with the wound. So rather than actually making it better, it just increases the person's emotional disorders. Wounds often corrupt prudence. For example, those who have been wounded will often think that they're meeting out of their anger, and in doing so they can teach others a lesson or something of this sort, but in fact their prudential judgments have been compromised because of the strength of the emotions arising from the wound. 
As a result, it affects their judgment. Self wounds can be particularly difficult for the person to overcome since the cause of the offense and the one offended are one and the same. Self wounds occur when we do something evil which either directly or indirectly causes our psychological impairment. It can directly cause one's psychological impairment or damage when the person knows that engaging in the activity will worsen his psychological illness. For example, the alcoholic who drinks knowing is going to continue causing him problems. Self wounds can be indirectly caused. For example, when a person seeks after some good while being blind to or ignoring the evil that will be inflicted on him as a result. For example, women who have abortions knowing that it is seriously wrong. This kind of wound often tends to be deeper and harder to overcome. Since punishment and vindication are the proper actions in relationship to evil action and evils inflicted, those who cause their own wounds will often be self-abusive. Just as one gets a delight from vindication of evils of, um, in relationship to others, one will get a certain delight in abusing oneself. So why are we going into this? Because you can begin to see that if people are psychologically wounded, they will wound themselves spiritually through sin. In the next homily, we will talk about spiritual wounds and why they are so dangerous.